you know what people hate, change. And with the help of painting legend Anker Geraldus, Valet not only changed but reinvented their venerable game color paint range. A more matte finish, better pigmentation, lots of new colors, but also a lot of old colors gone or changed. I'm afraid whether the new game color formula is really an improvement or only catering to pro painters like Angel while neglecting the needs of us more average painters. Was the old game color range really so bad it needed to be redone from scratch? I'm starting from Tale of Painters and I answer this question and more my review of the complete new Vallejo game color range. In October 2022, Acrylicus Vallejo relaunched their brand for the release of their new Express and Game Color ranges. They got a fancy new logo and Angel Giraldes seems to have become Vallejo's new brand ambassador, who also had great influence on the development of their new paint ranges, especially the new Game Color range. Vallejo and Angel completely reworked the formula and apparently the new game colors have a more matte finish, improved opacity and pigmentation and a longer working and drying time. For those that don't know, the original game color range was modeled after the former Siddle paint range that was discontinued in 2012. Urban legend has it that Games Workshop commissioned Vallejo to take over the production of their paint range back in the day. But when nothing came of it, Vallejo is said to have simply released the color range on their own as game color. I don't know if that's true, but if nowadays a manufacturer were to so brazenly copy another manufacturer's paint range color by color, there would probably be quite a shitstorm. Anyways, let's take a look at the new range. There are 136 colors in total, which break down into 80 regular acrylics, 9 metallics, 12 inks, 8 washes, 8 fluorescent colors, 12 special FX paints, 7 additives and varnishes and we also have the 24 new express colors to complement the range, bringing the number up to 160 paints. According to Vallejo's website, the range has been designed according to a base shadow layer system of triads, but honestly I don't see anything of that. Some colors are arranged in triads, but some in quartets and in between you always find the odd color or two. There's also no guide printed on the labels, though Vallejo's color chart should point you in the right direction of which colors are meant to go together. Compared to the old game color range, a total of 38 colors have been discontinued. If you rely on any of these paints, then stock up now while the old range is still available. Some colors have been renamed, but kept their original product number, bronze flesh tone became bronze brown, cadmium skin became skin tone, heavy warm gray became warm gray, Cold grey became neutral grey and heavy charcoal became just charcoal. Also keep in mind that because of the new formula and finish, old colors that have been carried over to the new range will look slightly different, more about that later. There are also quite a few new colors that close some of the gaps of the old range. 44 colors in total. Nevertheless, the game color range is quite small compared to Siddle or Reaper and what I'm still missing are petrol colors, more gray tones, dark skin tones and more muted and natural light skin tones as all of the light skin tones in the game color range are quite pink and peach. Well, with that out of the way, let's delve into the paint range. The new game color paints come in more sustainable bottles made from recycled PET, which I really appreciate, and they also contain more paint. Old game color bottles had 70 ml of paint, while the new ones have 80 ml, even though the bottles look a bit smaller. The plastic used for the bottle is completely transparent, so you can assess the colors better, and it also feels a bit thinner, which makes the bottles more squeezy, so watch out for accidental paint explosions. The tip has become thicker, which should make them less prone to splitting, which I welcome. Let's take a look at the 80 regular acrylic paints first. These cover most bases from all primary and secondary colors, bone, brown and skin tone colors, and grayscale paints as well. And spoiler alert, the acrylics are fantastic. Super smooth and creamy consistency and no, they didn't just convert them to the model color formula. The new game colors are thinner, so they don't require much if any additional dilution, but this is not at the expense of opacity as the coverage is amazing. The mid-tone and darker colors cover a medium gray base coat in 1 to 2 coats, the lighter colors in 2 to 3 and they apply so smoothly it's just a joy to paint with them. 
lead for base coating or fine highlights. If you're only familiar with Siddel colors, I would describe the new game colors like a freshly opened Siddel layer paint with a little bit of water added, while retaining the opacity of a base paint. In terms of pigmentation and creaminess, they're definitely up there with paint ranges like AK Interactive 3rd Gen, 2 Thin Coats and Pro Acryl Paints. The only colors that slightly disappointed me in terms of opacity were most of the yellow and orange paints and Bile Green. Since the other colors cover so amazingly, I had hoped that Vallejo had finally cracked the code for creating yellow and orange paints that aren't a pain in the butt, but no. The game color yellows and oranges still require quite a lot of coats to become fully opaque. At least they are a little better than the Citadel counterparts, but don't expect miracles. Because of the super smooth consistency, the new game colors also spray very well through an airbrush with a little bit of airbrush thinner, and because of the high pigmentation, they also dry brush well, though you might want to let them sit on a dry palette for a minute or two so they can thicken a little bit. I noticed that the new formula game colors have a longer drying time than Siddel and the Army Painter, and this is probably where Angel influence shows, because a longer working time makes the paints excellent for more advanced painting techniques like blending. But if you just want to paint your minis quickly, the long drying time can be a bit of a pain when applying base coats, even when batch painting. Once dry, they are more matte than the old game colors, and also more matte than Siddle for sure. Now a lot of pro painters favor matte paints, but keep in mind that matte paints are more prone to abrasion, as matte resins are not as strong as more glossy ones. But the big question remains, are the new game colors compatible with the old ones? I already listed at the beginning of the video which colors have been discontinued, but what about old colors with the same name? Did they stay the same? Can you switch from ultra new junior painting projects without any issues? Well, first of all, the new game colors are more matte, which definitely changes the color impression. Matte paints look paler than glossy ones, even if they use the same pigments. But the colors themselves have also changed slightly. As you can see here, I have randomly selected a couple old new colors, and the difference is sometimes more, sometimes less noticeable. If you use a color only for small details, it might not be an issue, but if, for example, you have used an old game color on a large area like the power armor of your Space Marines, it's very likely that a model painted with a new game color will look different when standing next to a model painted with the old version. So I definitely recommend stocking up on old game colors you depend on, as long as there are still old paints available. But apart from these minor issues, the new game color acrylics are amazing and really feel like next gen miniature paints that are up there with more pricier paints like Pro Acryl or Too Thin Coats. Let's move on to the metallics. And this is where it slowly starts to go downhill. The silver paints are okay, but rather thin. Their consistency is more like airbrush paint and much thinner than the old game color metallics. You can work with them, but they are not as good as steel from the Vallejo Model Air series and steel and dark steel from the Mecha Color series. Those are also airbrush paints, but their opacity is higher and they apply more nicely with a brush. Moreover, those three colors correspond very closely to the classic three silver paints from Games Workshop. Mithril Silver, Chainmail and Bolt Gun Metal, or Stormhost Silver, Iron Hand Steel and Lead Belcher for those that aren't a grizzly grey hunter like me. Whereas the new game color gunmetal is significantly darker than Lead Belcher and even darker than Iron Warriors. I am really disappointed with the gold colors though. Shining gold and glorious gold are not only thin but weak and need many coats to cover. By now, we have many better options for gold paints and I recommend Retributor Armor as well as Duncan Rhodes Tooth Ink Coats and Pro Acryl Golds, which just cover so much better. To a degree, the same is true for the bronze paints, which are also rather thin. Here I would prefer Runelord Brass and Brass Scorpion. Hammered Copper and Tinny Tin are decent, however, and cover well. All in all, new game color metallics are okayish, but I don't understand why Angel and Vallejo chose such a thin consistency, since Vallejo already offers many pre-thinned airbrush paints with their Model Air and Game Air series. The game color range is a brush painting range for me, so I would have preferred a thicker consistency. Before I take a look at the washes, help me beat the YouTube algorithm as my channel is still quite small, so smash the like button, hit the bell and subscribe to my channel so I can make more videos like this. You can also support me on Patreon for exclusive tutorials and resources. Thanks a lot and now let's take a look at the washes. These didn't change very much at all and should be consistent with their old versions, but for some reason Vallejo removed the green and grey wash and added a yellow wash instead. 
While the colors themselves stayed consistent, I did notice that they flowed better than the old washes. I heard they switched to a medium based on the new Express Color formula. Compared to the updated Citadel shade paints, Game Color washes are richer and have a slightly stronger tint and they also dry more matte. Black wash is a decent black wash, more like the old formula Narn Oil, for those that don't like the new formula. Umber and Sepia wash are two interesting shades of brown. I really like Umber wash as it is a blacker brown than Agrax Earth shade. Flesh wash is also very interesting. It's less orange reddish than Rakeland flesh shade, but a nuance more purple, similar in tone to Targo Rage shade, but lighter. I can recommend all of these as they expand and complement the brown and flesh shade paints from Citadel range nicely. The colored washes, on the other hand, are very bright compared to their counterparts from Games Workshop or the Army Painter. Especially yellow wash, which is almost unusable because the yellow pigment they chose is so light that you can hardly see the wash even over white primer. Red, blue and purple are okay, but the red and blue washes are also very bright, so they are only suitable for shading really light colors, which limits their usefulness. The game inks also stayed pretty much the same, which is good news for those that like the old game color inks. However, they removed brown and smoky ink, which of all things were the only ones I was still using, and added a new magenta, dark turquoise and white ink instead. In general, I have moved on to contrast-like paints. In fact, game color inks and the new express colors are very similar in terms of consistency and pigmentation. The only difference is in their behavior. As you can see, the game color inks create harsher transitions as the pigments tend to collect in the recesses more, whereas express colors create a more even tint with softer transitions. Personally, I prefer the formula of the new express colors and I'm not sure whether having two almost identical products in a single paint range was really necessary. I would have preferred the inks to be migrated to the express color range instead, but that's just me. Remember, when painting miniatures, it's not always about right or wrong, but different approaches that are all equally valid. There are many roads that lead to Terra, and if you were an avid user of the old game color inks, then you'll be happy they haven't changed. Now the fluorescent paints. The selection has been greatly expanded compared to the old game color range, and there are some cool colors in there that you don't see that often as fluorescent versions, for example magenta and cold green though I miss a typical plasma glow turquoise. By nature, fluorescent paints tend to be rather transparent, as you can see here, so I recommend using these with an airbrush so you can build up multiple thin layers quickly. With a brush, you will need to apply lots and lots of layers for an even coverage, so if you don't have an airbrush, I recommend using them more like a glaze over a matching base coat. It would have been great if a layer could have made their fluid paints more opaque, but they are on the same level as other fluorescent paints like those from the AK Interactive 3rd Gen range, so I can't complain too much. The Special FX paints are Vallejo's answer to Siddle's technical paints, and here I faced mixed results. The blood colors are not bad, but in terms of consistency and behavior, they're practically contrast or express colors that dry glossy. They are lacking the gooey gel-like consistency of Blood for the Blood God I like so much, but on the other hand, their red hues are a little more muted and realistic for those who prefer that. Demon Blood is just a deep purple, and if the color did not dry glossy, it would have been a better fit for the Express color range in my opinion. Similarly, Bile, Vomit and Acid are also practically glossy Express colors. Rust, Corrosion and Galvanic Corrosion are all very similar browns, and maybe it's just me, but I'm really missing a more orange rust color here. Green rust is similar to Nihalak Oxide, an opaque wash for creating verdigris. Moss and Lichen is a weird yellow ochre color. No idea of how to use it for moss, I'm afraid. The most interesting FX paint is probably Frost, which is a very thin white wash. When it dries, it creates a subtle blooming effect. All in all, with a few exceptions, the Special FX colors are not bad and better than the Army Painters Effect paints in my opinion. Though if in doubt, I would always go for the technical paints from Games Workshop. I feel these are more straightforward to use and do what they say on the tin better. But for those who want to create more subtle effects and like to experiment, the Game Color Special FX paints might be worth a look. Last but not least, we have a few additives, like this metallic medium, which is basically white metallic particles you can mix into other paints to give them a metallic sheen. 
There's also an airbrush thinner and glaze medium, as well as four varnishes from glossy to ultra matte. You have to be careful with the new game color varnishes, because they are not water based, unlike the old ones, but polyurethane based. Polyurethane varnishes are more durable, but more aggressive and can reactivate inks, contrast and express colors, as well as washes and shade paints and also damage decals. Polyurethane varnishes are useful for preparing models for all paints and enamel washes, but what's the reason to put them into an acrylic paint range? I don't know. I don't think polyurethane varnishes are suitable for the average painter, so maybe that's a question for Ankhel. And that was the complete new game color range in Fast Forward, except for the 24 Express colors, which I've reviewed in a separate video. The link can be found in the top right corner, so go watch it later, as these are one of my favorite subtle contrast alternatives yet. So now I have to give my verdict, and I have to say, I am conflicted. If I were to rate only the regular game color acrylics, I would have to give them a 9 or 9.5 because of their high quality, smooth consistency and amazing opacity and all that for a more than competitive price. To answer the question from the beginning, no, the new game colors aren't just for pro painters. I think they are a significant improvement for painters of any skill level, so good job Angel and Vallejo. On the other hand, many of my favorite colors have been removed and in general, all the new game colors changed slightly from the previous versions because of the new formula and more matte finish, which is always annoying when you need to replace an old paint. The brown and black washes are decent, but the colored washes are too bright to be as universally useful as the shades you find in Siddle's washes range. The inks haven't changed much and are still alright, but I find the express color formula to be superior, so I don't really have a need for them anymore. The Special FX and Flu paints are solid, but don't knock my socks off either, and the metallics are rather thin and weak, which is surprising as Vallejo makes so many great metallic paints. Therefore, I'm afraid I have to lower my rating and give the new game color range a total score of 7, not counting the express colors which I reviewed separately. This might sound a bit harsh, but don't get me wrong, the new Vallejo game color range is still a solid paint range. But if all paints would have been as spectacular as the new acrylics, the range could have become one of, if not the best miniature paint range out there, so kind of a missed opportunity. Now I'm super interested in your thoughts. Have you already tried the new game color range? What do you think of them? Tell me about your experiences in the comments, maybe you found use for them in a way I haven't thought of. And watch my review of Duncan Rhodes 2 Thin Coats paints here on the right. I was very impressed with them for the same reason as the new game colors. Thanks for watching and happy hobbying!